Uh, hi, this is a brief introduction to how we utilize Mormon's AI capabilities, especially the agent building and function calling. Uh, I have created this AI agent called Scheduler. Uh, it's supposed to create a new event in my calendar uh, given some inputs and following some constraints. And the thing I'm going to do is uh, for tomorrow morning, I have some fictitious events in my calendar. One of them is like from 6 to 7.30, I have stuff in Campbell Police Department, and then I have to meet home at uh, Lee at home at 9, and then I have to go to the hospital at 12. The locations of these events are one in here, uh, Campbell Police Department, and this is the hospital, and this summer here is home. And then I will add uh, another trip to another event at Redwood City for shopping at Whole Foods. The configurations here are quite straightforward. You got the AI model. Uh, in here, we're, chosen, we're choosing um, GPT-4. In fact, it's GPT-4.0. And temperature is just temperature setting. Then the, it just controls how random the, or creative uh, model is. Max rounds is how many times AI can invoke uh, functions before it returns an answer. And maximum token per sec uh, per round is exactly that. We are not going to be needing image processing. And these are the inputs. We got the location, preference, date, time zone, and duration. Uh, note that date here is actually a date type. Okay, and uh, here are the um, predefined prompts, or sometimes we just call them prompt templates. Uh, they're templates because uh, you can plug in actual values at those locations. Okay, so the job is to find whether we can go from uh, one location to another, to the new place in time, and if there's still time left over uh, for uh, that event, and then getting back or going to some new place uh, after the event ends. Uh, one little um, caveat is that uh, for some of the tools that AI is going to be using, it needs different formats for time. So sometimes we use ISO uh, 8601 with time zone, uh, something look like that. And sometimes we will need Unix timestamp which is essentially the number of seconds past uh, 1970, uh, yeah, to January 1st. Okay. Um, down here, we got a, a very simplistic rag. Essentially, we got um, the key value here, and then we filtered it to only return the Google Calendar access token. So that's that. Uh, we're not using RAG in the most traditional way. And here we have some interesting stuff. We got uh, some tools that AI can choose to use. The first one is uh, just an action flow that turns this ISO date string into a um, number, the Unix timestamp. And uh, then here we've got one for creating Google Calendar events, one for calculating distance and actually both distance and travel time uh, between different uh, locations. And then another one for uh, checking up uh, how many, like what events we have. Uh, so all of these are annotated uh, with descriptions for AI. Uh, and you can see some of those are uh, are mandatory fields and some are not. Similarly here and here we are very we are very specific that um, uh, the time format must be uh, Unix timestamp. I cannot use anything else. Okay. Uh, you can see that we can also use AI as a tool, but we are not going to demonstrate it here. And in this portion, we can switch between uh, streaming, streaming stream, or uh, a typed output. Uh, this is a JSON output with strong types. And uh, we haven't selected uh, mandatory 
fields, but we can. Okay, so once we did that, let's input something. So imagine we are going to the Whole Foods Market in Redwood City. Okay, preference morning only. And then we'll choose uh, a date, which will be tomorrow. And time zone In fact, we don't necessarily need to put it here because uh, uh, the location might give it away. But uh, to make life easier for the AI, we'll do that. 25 minutes as a duration. Okay, so once we click start, we'll see AI jump into action. Okay, the prompts are essentially the the um, the prompt template that's uh, being filled up, right? So we got all these things filled up. This from database gives you the um, from database gives you the key, which is useful for uh, for calling one of the APIs, and we can see where that's used later. And then that's just a constraint. This gives you how uh, how this thing. Um, returns uh, this typed JSON. Okay, so it called two tools. First, uh, it checked the, um, it actually invoked this API. The name is missing here, but it invoked this API. This bearer token was fetched from here. So AI filled it in for us. I checked uh, for the, the entire day of um, uh, entire day of to, uh, tomorrow, and then these are the returned results. So you can see the Campbell Dis uh, Police Department, and then at home, and then uh, Kaiser Permanente. Those are the three things that was um, returned, and then it tries to figure out how to translate this the, this thing. This string, which represents at the beginning, well, actually eight, uh, eight a.m. in the morning, into a Unix timestamp, and once that's done, it calls the next tool. It now checks the driving time between home and Whole Foods Market, uh, and the departure time is that, which is exactly the same as that, at eight, uh, eight a.m. And it figured out, okay, it's take it's going to take 25 minutes to go from uh, home to Whole Foods Market. And then it called um, another uh, API. In this case, create uh, Google Calendar events. How can how I'm able to tell because I recognize the shape of it. Uh, unfortunately, we should really show it here, but uh, that's uh, something that's still missing here. And uh, now it's fully created, and then it returned uh, this event. And we can see this. If we just go there, you will see this event, grocery shopping. And that would be um, uh, that would be the, 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 the end of the, the demonstration. So that's the whole flow.